This is my pretend home. It's an enormous pretend home, but I don't need this much pretend room. I'm a man who pretends to have modest needs. My engineering staff have been busy building me a tiny gadget house, which will contain everything I require. Will it work? Probably, but let's see it anyway. Surrounded by skyscrapers, my pocket-sized property sits seamlessly in the centre of London City. Measuring just three metres by four metres, this streamlined house could be a glimpse into the future when we are all compelled to live life in smaller spaces. So here is my downsized house. It looks like a normal Hansel and Gretel style house. But there's a key difference. Would you, Adam and Eve, that there are five rooms in one here? Let's explore them together as a team now. The interior floor area measures just 12 square metres, but it contains all any man or other genders could ever want. Welcome to the crib. It's modestly sized, let's say that. Um, this is my living area. Scattered about the place are all manner of tiny gadgets. A music player that turns anything it touches into speakers. The steadfast Thermomix. And the TV remote control won't get lost behind the cushion because the cushion is the remote control, allowing me to lose other things behind it. It's a bit like a library stacking system. I turn this wheel. Obviously, my objet are now under direct threat. My engineering staff has triumphed. The walls inside the cube sit on runners, moving backwards and forwards, thus reconfiguring the interior space. Lock eyes on the kitchen, y'all. The power and plumbing supply is built into the back wall. All I now need to do is move the walls again so I can get back to the living room. Lovely. I'm now ready to receive guests. When I say guests, I lie. There is just one man coming, a comedian called Jimmy Carr, whose house may well be larger than this. So this is the new house? Yes, I've made sure that it's in keeping with the area. That's very important to me architecturally. Uh, it's not fully in keeping with it. I mean, it's not, strictly speaking, a residential area. Who are you, Kevin McLeod? <laughs> oh, a little bit. How dare you? I love what you tried to do and it very nearly came off. Do you want to go inside? <laughs> wow. How do you feel about this? I, too, in my home, have uh, an, an entrance hall where you hang coats yeah. and, and take off shoes. And I presume this is that space. And then, like the TARDIS, it opens up and we go into the proper... the property. Don't be glib. Sit down. OK, sit down. Well, well sit where? Down well, maybe I'll in take... the living room. Yeah. Uh, in the living room, OK. In the living room. In the... OK. Jimmy's initial rudeness is arrested by this hitherto hidden piece of space-saving technology. Yeah? Do you know what? I like it because it's gadgety. Yeah. I just like... There's something about that so satisfying. If you just had a TV there, I would not be impressed. We squeeze into the kitchen. We're now in the kitchen area. I've got to admit, that's quite clever. Do you like it? Well, that's quite a... Again, the gadgety nature of being able to do that is kind of... Does that then move across as well? Yes. Are we in danger? Jesus, not really. Actually, There we, we go. Does. Come on. How does... So you, could, you can decide how big your kitchen is? Yeah, you can reenact that scene in Star Wars where they get crushed. How like your house is this currently? I've got that. Great gadget. What do you like about the Thermomix, Jimmy? The Thermomix makes the best porridge in the world. Or just throw everything in there, it does it for about ten minutes, and you get this incredible creamy porridge. Nice. Love a porridge in the morning. It's, it's a hell of a gadget. I mean, well, that's a hell of a gadget. At last, recorded proof that Jimmy Carr eats porridge. Do you want a plate? Is that like a... Oh, for... Oh, my God, that is a... There you go. Do you want some quiche? I'm liking the kitchen, generally. Yeah. I've got a feeling if you show me another room, all of that will be destroyed. His feeling is proved correct, as I reveal to him a tiny toilet. So, actually, there is an exercise element. I mean, the whole house is basically the gym. Yes, good. And I think we can take out the cameraman. Here we go. I mean, this is... Yeah? Are you pleased? This is sort of fabulous, isn't it? The duck doubles up as a digital speaker, and the shaver is the size of a credit card. Get in the machine. What's the machine? Okay. 
washing machine, shower. I mean, brilliant. I mean, well, that's a shower. That's like a shower in any normal size house. That's just a shower. OK. Uh, on this... Sure. Has anyone been damaged? I mean, it, it strikes me that health and safety-wise... Has anyone been damaged? You could come in of an evening... Yeah. ..and you could crush a loved one. Yeah, they could be just flat. How would you crush a loved one? E it's well, it's there. Wait there. Wait there for one second. I'll show you. OK, do it. Yeah? Keep going. Yeah? Yeah? Richard, you in there? Yeah. If it hurts, tell me. I'm in the shower, fool. So the safety mechanism on this house is hide in the shower? That's always the safety mechanism. What's your assessment, Jimmy? I like it. I think it's genuinely fun and innovative. And if you think about it, it's like... It's basically half a shipping container, maybe a third of a shipping container, and they've made it kind of an interesting, fun little space. And there's a problem with housing and where housing is. It could solve it. You set one of these up in, in every shipping container and plunk them right in the middle of town. Where are we now? We're in the middle of Spitalfields. Sure. No one can afford a flat around here. They're crazy money. So just stick one of these in. There is one final room to reveal, and that room can only be described as being upstairs. How do we get upstairs? OK, watch this. Whoa, whoa, whoa easy, you easy. Move this to, to, to the centre. I'm, move, I'm moving, I'm moving. Okay. All right. So that to the centre. Oh, OK. Hey, now. Well, no, I'm putting it in the centre. You're not authorised. I don't think this marriage is going to work. Whoa. So this is where the magic happens, is it? Well, this is where the beds are. Wow. Let's leave it at that. The tiny cube house manages to contain two double beds suspended on a mezzanine level. If we were single guys, right? Imagine sure. the scenario. We're single guys. Yeah. We live together. Which I'm very much not, but go ahead. OK, we're on a budget. A couple of handsome fellas like us. Don't We're touch going to me. be bringing the ladies back, right? Shh, maybe no. It's a concern. If you were trying... If I was going to try and... The images flooding into my mind are so abhorrent to me, Jimmy, that I must quell this line of thought. I mean, it's not spacious. It, let's, not, let's not pretend that, it is. Yeah, but that's literally the point. It's conserving space. Does it do it effectively? Yeah, it bloody does. Jimmy Carr, thank you very much. And on that devastating note, Jimmy makes his exit, his head a pulse with the brave new miniature world I've opened up before his tiny, confused little islands. Well, there's no need for me to blow my own trumpet because Jimmy Carr has just blown it for me. And I'm not sure I'm entirely comfortable with that sentence myself. You see, we've managed to downsize an entire house into an area probably no bigger than one of his walk-in wardrobes. I feel I can retire to my upstairs sleeping quarters in triumph.